Okay, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to wrap up this section of the series and release the RTS project part two. So before we do that, I'm going to fix a few things in our code and also fix a couple of things that I noticed with the RTS project part one. So I'm going to just wrap up things and give us a good foundation to move on for part three and to uh, finally release this project as a whole project. So the first thing is, um, in the previous video we actually got working our units uh, in the game so we can create them with our GUI menu. We can just click here and place them wherever we like in the scene. Same thing for our solar panel. Okay, so everything's working fine but I just noticed a few things we could uh, tidy up. And the first thing is to do with our health manager. So when a unit is spawned, we call this method using our events and delegates. A new unit is um, spawned so we can get the health bar game objects within the unit and then create the sprite, the health bar sprite itself. That's really important stuff. So the chances are when we create the unit, the unit will not be selected. If this is the case, we don't want the health bar to be shown. So it's a very simple fix for this one so the health bar doesn't flash on one frame and then disappear on the next frame. Um, we can just check if the unit is selected. It most probably will not be on that particular frame the health bar is created. So if it's not we can just go ahead and hide the health bar straight away. So we can say if unit get component unit selected. So if the unit is not selected we can then get the health manager and uh, hide the sprite. So we can just say game object find health bar sprite manager get component get the sprite manager component um, hide sprite calling the method from the sprite manager class which can hide this health bar sprite okay so this just makes sure that when we create a unit in the game the health bar will not show up temporarily um, so we can just select it and uh, the health bar is showing here just fine okay but the most important thing is that it's not flashing or showing when we first create these units okay so that fixes that issue so I noticed a issue when when building out multiple units in the game and that's to do with the trigger test so I'm just going to open the triggers so it turns out this will be fine if we're just testing one object but when we collide with multiple objects in the game um, sometimes it could say we would pass the test when we're when we're en exiting a trigger but on the same frame we might be colliding with another unit so I'm going to scrap this pass trigger test and instead we're going to count how many uh, game objects this unit is, is triggered okay so we can just make a public integer number triggers entered okay and zero to begin with this is a better way of testing we should have realized this previously but never mind so when we enter a trigger we can just say number of triggers enters plus plus when we exit we can go back one unit so when we are when we are not interacting with any triggers in the game boom we can go to create our unit and uh, this is controlled in the menu setup so let's just scroll down where it says if we pass the highest test and if we pass the trigger test we can change this to if we've passed the height test and um, let's say ghost get component get that ghost triggers test script uh, number of triggers entered equals zero then we can go ahead and do this stuff cool so now we don't need the variable called pass trigger test. Remove that. Okay so going back to the ghost trigger test we can just get rid of the start method now. We don't need to default this value to true and um, things get more simple now. So this is a better way to test if we're interacting with any units. Okay so I'm just going to test things as we go along just so we don't get any errors. So let's just create things. Everything seems to be fine. Everything. So selecting the solar panel. Yep it realizes that we are colliding with these units the number of triggers is go is uh, increasing and decreasing okay so the next issue I'd like to work on is the on the mouse script so I want to um, address the update drag box mesh at the moment it's being updated on every single frame if we are dragging that is and if there are units on screen to select 
So this is really expensive in Unity and um, it's just so we can save resources and just so the whole thing doesn't fail. Um, I'm going to call this method on every three frames. So every three thra uh, frames this method can be called if we are dragging. Because depending on your machine you could be running at 60 frames a second, 30 frames a second. So this is more than enough time to determine whether the units are in the mesh or not. So at the top of the script um, as you can see we've actually tidied up the variables at the top of the script and also commented a bit more things to make uh, make it understandable so that that will be a good thing to um, to focus on if you download RTS projects part 2 within the drag section we can just declare another two variables private static integer I'm going to call this frames before update drag mesh equals three. So this is how many frames we need to count down from before the, uh, the drag box mesh is updated. Also going to make another public static. Frames left before update drag mesh. So let's default this to one so it can update on the first frame we drag. So now we have these two variables. I'm going to find late update and we can just simply say frames left before the drag mesh minus minus because we are dragging and we can say if frames left before the drag mesh is zero then we can go ahead and uh, update the drag box mesh okay and then we can default this value frames left to simply frames before which is three frames cool so now the drag box mesh is updated on every three frames instead of every one frame okay so let's jump back into the game and test it out again. Boom, so I'm just going to create a couple of units to f firstly. Okay, so dragging, yeah that's good, so, the, so that's fine. The drag box mesh is working with this uh, solar farm. Cool. Okay, so that fixes another issue people are having. So, okay, so I'd just like to mention here, we can also improve the um, performance of the A-star pathfinding by, by increasing the number of nodes available. So to do this we can just say width nodes, depth nodes, it's 128 at the moment. Let's just double this and just uh, give you guys an example of how it works. And the node size now has to be 2 to 1 because we've just doubled the amount of nodes. So the graph itself will double in uh, size. Let's just keep this at 4 for now, I'll show you what I mean. So as you can see <laughs> the graph has doubled in size. To shrink it down we can just put the node size to now 2 units and scan. So if I zoom into the origin of the map, as you can see, the nodes are now very small. This will give us better performance with our uh, units walking in the game in the free version of the A-Star Pathfinding. So I'm going to keep it like this when exporting the RTS project part two. So a user, uh, um, a subscriber to Unity Chat, I don't know if I can mention his name or not because I haven't asked him, but he, he posted a really helpful thing. And that is to do with our additive tint shader. So this is the shader we use to project images onto the terrain. As you can see here our fog is color 111 but we don't want our fog to interact with our this shader at all. So don't worry if you don't understand this code. We might be doing a course later on on shaders. But within the fog we can just simply say mode off. So this mode is off now, the fog will not interact with this shader which is awesome. So thank you for the person who posted the comments on that. I did reply and said thank you. So when I mean this um, shader, we're talking about this white graphic here that's interacting with the terrain. Okay, This is more of a GUI um, attribute to the game, so we don't really want it to interact with 3D uh, things in the game such as fog. Okay, so. Another thing um, we picked up in the comment section was uh, to do with the world builder. So I'm going to open this world builder now. As you can see here, we, we dedicate a lot of lines of code to convert the uh, array lists into normal arrays. So, But the, the, the kind person who posted the comments in the comment section gave us a really quick way to do this. So we overlooked this in the previous video, but we can update this now. So if we import using system link we can then use a cool method called to array so we can just delete all of this code and we can um, save it into the player pref file straight away so we can just say unit units to array boom done so again thank you for the person who posted that 
gives us gives us a um, good thing to work with. So positions to array, rotations to array. Okay, so another nice thing there to tidy up our script. Cool. So I think I'll build this project out now and put it put it on UnityChatChannel.com. RTS project part two. It's a good um, starting point for building up your RTS game. So as you can see, we can build multiple units. Everything's working. Other cool features of the part two is um, the events and delegates we've been working on. Um, the health okay, manager okay. to add the health bars to the units. The humanoid robot will be available in your project. Um, obviously, we've done the units creation and um, managing resources as well. We've, we've tackled another way to uh, load objects in the game. Awesome. So thanks for watching the video. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.